Yeah, the double denim. I don't think your daughters are going to be pleased that you've, um, you know, taken a pair of the jeans and re-stitched into a shirt, mate. But it does actually look beautiful on your carcass, mate. And, uh, but it's great to be back. How are you, old bruiser, your old son, uh, Nisbo, Staff? Exciting news, boys. What? Not just the rugby championship and the bleeders low, two stones, one bird. Uh, does, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Two stones, one bird. Two stones, one bird. What the hell? Uh, yeah. yeah, big news, fellas. Uh, the rugby championship and the bled is low, or the bled is woe for the, for the Wallabies. But um, I've got my own promo code, Balls20. So for all the punters at home, if you want to get around um, the championship, sign up at tab.co.nz, deposit 20, and we'll match 20. Hell of an offer. Balls20. Uh, you know, How excited. did you get that? Well, boys, I think the ratings are going through the roof and, um, you know, I'm breathing hot on your heels as a broadcaster these days, so that's exciting stuff. And uh, <laughs> Feeling anyway, the heat, feeling the boys, heat. Boys, big news this weekend. Uh, obviously, the bled is low. Uh, the Chappelle Corby Cup, Joe Roth put it so well. Uh, they thought it was going to go away for two weeks and it went away for 20. Yeah. Absolute roost, isn't he? Yeah, Joe Roth, one of the greats. It's absolutely one of the greats. And this boat, you, you were calling... In the height of Joe Roth's career, they miss someone like him, don't they? Yeah, they're missing a few X-Factor players, aren't they, the Wallabies? But, um, you know, I think with Courtney Beale coming back in, he's a guy that hasn't been there since, what, the World Cup final in 2015. Throw Israel Folau, um, Michael Hooper. I tell you what, they're not a bad team, the Wallabies. Let's, let's not get too carried away and let's not underestimate them. You know the whole sort of bug scandal that went on? You know, Ant's done some investigation and I've gone an eye for an eye. What have you I've done? Gone, mate, I've got some inside scoop that you boys won't believe. I went and bugged the Australian team sheds. You did? Well, I know, I know I've got some sources. Someone in the team who's known as Bitch Boy, yeah. he'll do anything for a free henna tattoo, I tell you what. But I'm not going to say any names, Staff. No, you have to tell us. No, I'm not. No, it's it's, it's be, confidential. It's but I've got this audio, and uh, this is going live to the nation today, and our ratings are going to go through the roof. Um, but when I when I approached Quaid, I said, hey, mate, you know, can you plant this bug? And um, we need to get some insight, and um, I'll give you a free henna tattoo. And the guy the guy will oblige, you know, so anything. Oh, well, let's have a listen. Freebie. Yeah, let's have a listen, fellas. It's fantastic effort, mate. It doesn't get us out of there. We don't get deadly squat. We don't get a point. They don't give us something just because we're getting close. It means nothing. If you didn't think that I'm going to be happy walking into this room when we get beaten still, we can't be. We just can't accept it. That's a I don't know about you guys. Like, if I see one bloke... Well, like... <laughs> what well, the well, hell yeah. goes on in that team room? Geez, that's not what I expected, Staff and Nisbo. Um, some very interesting stuff going on inside the Wallabies team shed. I was just trying to marry up what some of those noises translated into what was actually going on in there. Yeah, well, uh, you know, you had the didgeridoo going there at one stage. Well, I get that. Someone blowing on the big pipe. Yeah. Um, Nisbo, what else do we have? The, the, the kookaburra, Steve Irwin, sounded like he came back from the, d- the dead. And, and the team talk, while someone was getting whipped, uh, these guys sound like they're in dire straits and a bit of a pickle. Yeah, well, they are in a bit of a pickle. I mean, I heard a crocodile Dundee in there as well, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, some, some very strange things, yeah. Mate, I'll tell you what, Shag and his men in black, you know, he's just done the Arnott's ad, and he doesn't want to lose the bickies over there on Australian soil. Staff, um, the ABs, McKenzie back to fullback, Bender on the wing, Rico, Sonny Bull back in the centres, Squires back starting. Thoughts? Yeah, look, I'm incredibly excited, especially for Damien McKenzie. I mean, he he's led all the stats. He's been the... The entertainer for the last two Super Rugby campaigns, and he gets his his first real crack in a black jersey, and I'm absolutely stoked for him. And um, the big thing for me, though, Nisbo, is post Lions. If you're an All Black, 2017 was about the Lions series. Will they be able to get up for this? And I know it's Australia, and it's in Australia, but you can't tell me they'll be as fizzed for the Wallabies test as they were for the Lions. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, they didn't win the Lions series, so there's pretty uh, there's a lot of incentive there to do well in this. Uh, well, firstly, the Bledisloe Cup and then the Rugby Championship. Uh, I actually had a crush on one of my teachers, my art teacher, and um, I would purposely get detentions after school detention so I could just sit in the classroom with her and write lines. Uh, but that's How old different. Were you? I was, you know, 15, 16. Oh, that's all right. But yeah, I won't mention her names, but Miss Cochran, bloody beautiful. Uh, 
<laughs> actually saw her not long ago in the pub and had a photo with her 10 years in between drooling. So, um, hell of a nice lady. But, um, fellas, let's look at the TAB market spread for the rugby championship, or the bleeders low in this case. Nisbo, this is going to be uh, probably a closer game than usual. Where's your head at, mate? Well, I'm thinking it's going to be close because uh, three years ago we went over there and we had a boring old 12-all draw. Then one year later, 2-15, we lost. Admittedly, we won well last year. Uh, the Wallabies were pretty awful last year. But I'm thinking it'll be back to a close game. I'm personally going to go All Blacks 12 and under. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Can you please save those uh, succulent sounds for the bedroom staff? <laughs> Mate, where's your head, uh, uh, your heart at, Steffi? I also think All Blacks 12 and under, but I'm going to grab a little bit more value and go right to the bottom of the markets with option 59. I think, given this big preparation Australia have had, and New Zealand a short, much shorter preparation, a little bit of a hangover from the Lions series, a little bit of fatigue from the Super Go. I'm going to take Australia to lead at half time and the All Blacks to come back and win by 12 and under. And that's paying a fruity $10. Ten notes. Ten notes. I wouldn't be surprised if the Wallabies come out just firing yeah. and eking out a bit of a lead at half time. I just think the ten bucks is too good for me to ignore. Well, that's fantastic stuff. Uh, like your picks, lads. I'm going to go for um, Ben Smith to to dot over the try line. He's always got um, white line fever. He's actually scored 16 tries from his 23 appearances at the Rugby Championship. Stat. He is the stat man. Uh, the printer stat man here. Ben Smith to cross over for a meat pie. Go get him, Benji. Uh, anyway, fellas, it's great to um, to have you back on board. I'll see you next week. Up the mighty ABs and Steve Hansen. Don't lose your biscuits.